And I will uh, tell you that our new club secretary will put the announcements into the wood chips newsletter in case I read them too fast or you miss something and want to get a little bit more information. Um, we'll have a demonstration. It's a remote demonstration by Neil Brand on turning duplicate spoons. Uh, it sounds very interesting and something I've never seen before. So I'm looking forward to that. We'll take a short break after the demo and then we'll get into our challenge table, which is uh, small turn projects that could be sold for under $50 based on the examples for members at last month's meeting. And then we'll do the show and tell table. So that's pretty much how the night will roll. I'll start with our announcements. Uh, our club added three new members this past month. So it's always nice to see our membership uh, continuing to grow during the middle of the year. Our first KCWT Members Memorial Scholarship has been awarded. I don't see Matt here tonight, but you might recognize Matt if you saw him. He's traveling tonight. Okay. Uh, Matt Nowak was awarded, and uh, he, he's using his uh, scholarship to take Anthony's spindle class, which is has started now. Um, if anybody was interested, there is a donation tab located on the website um for if you wanted to give a donation towards a memorial scholarship uh let's see i want to let everybody know if you've got an idea that could improve the club um ideas from the members are great and we'll roll it through the board and you might see something implemented that that was your idea so please let a board member know or talk to me and we'll uh we'll try to do what we can to keep the club improving um as I mentioned, we have a new club secretary. Somebody has stepped up to take this important role. Calvin, can you stand up? This is Calvin Wright. He is our new club secretary. So I, I imagine all of you noticed that we had a wood chips go out last month, and it's been quite several months since we had a wood chips go out. So uh, I appreciate you taking that position, and I really appreciated seeing the wood chips come out again. Thank you, Calvin. Um, the new location for the wood turners, uh, for the woodworkers guild and the wood turners club is still progressing. Let's see. Can you go to the next slide, Rob? So if you look in the, at the photos there, you'll see the building is the one in the middle. And then if you look to the east of the building is El Pat Patron restaurant, which is over there. And if you look to the left as you're looking at the building shooty lumber is there so i wanted to give you kind of an orientation of generally where we're talking about i don't think uh anything's totally finalized on that but it is progressing and i think that is probably where we're going to end up um floor plans and actual move dates are still being worked out uh the woodworkers guild and the landlord are working out the final details floor plan uh excuse me timing for the move Maybe as early as January of 2024, but I think there, it'd probably be just following that because there's going to be some time necessary to get that space ready for us to move over. Um, the next announcement is a sad one. I I know if you were in the Woodworkers Guild, you probably have heard this, or and you probably know Mike, but uh, Mike McCauley passed away last month kind of unexpectedly from an infection that that they didn't know he had i guess um and we know mike or a lot of us know mike because he was santa at santa's workshop he was also one of the key organizers him and his son was the key organizers in bringing the santa's workshop event into the club um Sad news. It was, I mean, literally, I went around the day that I heard this and felt like Santa had died. It, it was just, it, it, he was only 71 years young. So um, it was a loss. If you happen to know Chris, his son, who is a, a guild member and, and does the AV work, um, give him your condolences. I'm sure it was hard, hard loss for the family because it was so unexpected. However, due to the loss, uh, this year's Santa's workshop has been canceled. Um, there may be, or I don't even want to say that there will be, but there 
is talk about maybe having an open house when we get moved over to the new site and we may incorporate some of that kind of activity into that that but it'll probably be a middle uh early early spring uh early summer or spring summer type timing on that so um again just wanted to let everybody know in case you didn't hear that that might have passed i wanted you to be aware of that um okay going to the help wanted boy we got all kinds of help that we need um the club needs more member participation please consider pitching in if you can um, have you signed up on the sign up genius to assist at the Irish festival this year? I saw the sign up genius and I saw a lot of names that I recognized, but I, I didn't see enough names there that I didn't recognize. So please, uh, if you have an opportunity and could assist with the Irish festival this year, uh, get in on the sign up genius. And it's a, um, once you're signed up as, as a, as somebody that will be there, Kevin's a trying to get everybody a wristband to get free entry. Um, so it helps to know how many uh, we need to get. Um, let's see where this, the club still needs a few additional shop openers and some backups. Uh, and if you are interested, see me. Um, or we may need to adjust some of the dates for the open shop in the future. But right now we're holding, holding the same as we always have. Um, we are looking for a member or a member, family member, uh, that might be able to enhance the club's media pre uh, social media presence. If you have any experience or are willing to learn, we need your help. Um, and then again, I noted perhaps you have a family member that would assist. So this is something where we'd like to get our, uh, if it's as simple as maybe an advertisement that we could get on our website and then possibly post out onto some of the social medias. I'm not a real big social media guy, so I don't really know a whole lot about what I'm talking, but I do know that any presence out there would be uh, an, uh, a plus for the club. Let people, you know, the more people that know about us, the more potential members we have. So the goal would be to advertise our club and promote events on the different social media platforms. Um, again, we're always looking for demonstrators. If you've come across a project idea to demonstrate, uh, talk to Mike and he can get you on the schedule for uh, sometime either later this year, which is pretty much filling up or possibly early next year. Um, we got a few of these. The board's requesting donations of totes and tubs for, for storage um, so that we can pack them up to relocate the club later. Um, if you bring some in, and we had several brought in today, and I appreciate it. Um, those that, that brought them in, just drop them off in the shop. We'll probably have a pile of them uh, stacking up that we'll use and, and, and get into later in the year when we start getting really serious about packing up. Okay, that's my help wanted. Now I'm going to open shop. Uh, one of the Powermatic lays is currently down due to uh, issues with the tailstock, but we have got the parts on order to fix the problem. We just got to make sure that they get here. So sometimes those parts, they say that they're in, and then they, after you've paid for them, they'll tell you that they're back ordered. So we haven't seen that yet, but we're hoping for good things there, and we'll get that fixed up and ready to go again. I um, wanted to thank all the members who assisted with the last shop cleanup. Um, it looked really good. We had about a dozen members show up and help out and we were complete in about an hour and a half and it's unbelievable how much dust we can get out of that space and all of our vacuums work good now. So thank you all that came and helped sh that day. Um, if you're in the open shop using the equipment and you have a concern or see something that's not working right or is broken, please let the board know or if the board, nobody from the boards around, let the shop opener know, and then shop openers let me know or let the board know, and we'll try to address those concerns. Um, and finally, please help keep the shop clean and organized. It's nice to see it when it's all clean and organized, but it doesn't take long to get out of hand pretty fast if we don't put some attention to it. So appreciate you all helping with that. Uh, let's see, upcoming uh, events and activities. 
Um, I am kind of trying to organize or have organized a uh, hosting of a small group of Boy Scouts for a pin turning demonstration uh, on Saturday, August 26th. I think that's two Saturdays from now. It'll run at about one o'clock um, till about three or whenever it takes to get done. Um, I am looking for a few pin maker members that might be able to help that day. I think basically we're going to demonstrate turning the pins because the boys, the scouts can't use the equipment and tools. So they'll be watching us and then we'll be basically providing them the pin and, and the parts and then they'll go assemble parts. So it fun event. I'm, I'm hoping, I don't think we're going to have probably more than six to eight kids. So I could use about three or four people and i know that i've got a couple on the list but i can sure use the help and the more the merrier um see me if you'd be interested in that okay and i'll end up our activities and events with the 2023 irish festival which is coming up labor day weekend september 1st 2nd and 3rd that's friday saturday and sunday like i had mentioned there is a sign up genius site that has been created for this three-day event. Um, Kevin, can you get to the Sign Up Genius through the website? Okay. There was an email that went out that had a link to the Sign Up Genius as well as if, if you want to find it, you can get there from the website. Um, there are still plenty of time slots. Pick your time. Um, love to see everybody that can be there. Um, sign up by the end of this week so you can get a free entry wristband. This is the club's biggest sales opportunity of the year. So um, it's, it's, it's good to show a good face and we do need the help so that we can keep the dollars rolling in. Uh, please consider donating items to sell during the event. I think that's one of the opportunities or one of the um what we were hoping for with the challenge table tonight, but uh, until the event starts, we'll take anything that you'd like to put out there for sale. You can sell individual items. The club will take 30% of the uh, sales and then you would get the 70% of that. So if you want to do that, well, we need to make sure that we know that you're wanting to sell that as an individual. We need it to be priced and we need it to, uh, I guess, be tagged and, and ready to go for, for the event. So if you have an idea or want, want to try that, um, Ed, Ed can help you get lined up for that. Uh, let's see, upcoming meeting demonstrations. We got an R IRD tonight that again, uh, if, if you can, please provide a $10 donation for, we're going to do another one next, next month in September. We've got a professional Turner, Jim Etcher, um, and it's a demonstration on mastering the skew. And if anybody's like me and thinks that a skew is a, uh, negative rake scraper, um, he might change my mind. I'm still scared, but he might change my mind on that. We were going to do tops in October to get geared up for the Santa's workshop, and we decided to pull that. We've all seen the tops demonstration over the last couple of years. So Mike's going to try to, was that going to be? Uh, October is dawn, right? So one of the challenges that um, anybody that's turned green wood faces is the green wood moving and, and having too much moisture content, potentially cracking while it's drying. This is an, uh, a um, technique where you place it in these desiccant, desiccant beads, um, which is like the silicone silica that you get in, in, uh, pill bottles and in the new pair of shoes and things and it says do not eat but the stuff will suck the moisture out of your project be it a bowl or a, or, or a whatever um, and then you can actually put them back in the oven and recharge them is that right Don so it'd be real interesting to know and if you've ever battled 
waiting long enough for something to dry out by itself, uh, which was usually my problem. I get too anxious and want to jump into the second turning before it's really ready. This might give me an avenue to get there faster. Um, and then November, we'll, we're going to try to get some kind of Christmas gift themed demonstration going. So those are coming up. Um, okay, locating information. If anybody hasn't been to the KCWP website, kcwoodturners.org is probably the best place to look for uh, any information regarding the club and upcoming events. We've got the wood chips newsletter coming back out, so you'll get information there, hopefully. And feel free to always ask a board member. I am one. Mike is one. Anthony, we got uh, that whole table there are all board members. So uh, if you've if you've got a concern or a question or anything, uh, feel free to ask any of us. Okay, I think that pretty much gets me through my announcements and leads me up to our safety minute, which uh, Phil's got a really good and timely safety minute for us tonight. I do. I do. I hope so. Uh, so has anyone picked up any wood the past couple of weeks off the side of the road from a neighbor's yard? Mike, you have. Holly. Yeah. It is that time of year. Storms coming through, wood falling down. Uh, I wanted to go over some of the uh, some of the challenges you might find with some of this wood, specifically what to avoid. Uh, I think it was John Jordan who said, don't turn blank wood, uh, fill in the blank with whatever word you want to put in there. Um, but essentially, when we're when we're picking wood up off the side of the road, we want to look for certain things that might be problems. Um, I should have brought some better photos. As you can see, you just have a picture of me, which is a pretty terrible one. Um, but what kinds of things will you find in? Oh, there we go. Look. Hey, hey. thank you. Uh, in the middle picture right here, what's that look like? Anybody call it out. Nail. We got metal. So metal is one thing to avoid when picking up wood on the side of the road. You might not know that the metal is in there. Most metal, uh, as I'm told, is usually at about eye level height or somewhere around here because that's where people put lots of nails into wood with signs and things like that. Um, but you might find metal in other places too. Like I have a fence post through an elm tree uh, in my yard. And when I take down that elm tree, I will probably just leave the base there because I'm not going to get that thing out. Um, so metal, if you see dark shavings, sparks coming out of the wood as you're trying to cut it up, all indicators. If you are if you look at your, your saw chain that you just sharpened and now it's totally dull, probably metal. I'm not going to say I cut through that, but I probably did. And then in the picture next to it, I've got a little kind of yellow line around there. Um, it's kind of hard to see because it's a small picture there. But what do those, does anybody know what those lines indicate? I heard it. Ring shake. So right in the middle, this section right here, that's right around the pith. And there's this line right around the pith right there where it's separating. And we call it ring shake because it's a ring-shaped um, area where the pieces are detached. So if you tried to, uh, um, to turn that, it would basically fall into two pieces. If you cut it, it'll fall into two pieces. Uh, but you don't always see that right away. Uh, in fact, I had... A piece of oak. I had a few pieces of oak that I cut off in my neighbor's yard next door, brought it over to my shop. The next day, I now see all these rings from the ring shake because it had fallen down. It was a limb that had fallen down probably 50 feet to the ground. And that type of fall will cause ring shake or other stress to occur to the tree. What other things should we be careful of with urban wood or urban logs that we are picking up? We got metal. We got ring shake. What else might we see? Any, any ideas? Poison oak, that's actually a good one. That's not in the tree, that's on the tree. So take a look at that bark when you're picking something up too. Any other ideas? Bugs. Bugs can be a great indicator, especially on some kinds of maple, about what you might find on the inside. Um, but yeah, you might be bringing bugs into your workshop. Uh, I like to remove the bark before I take it into my workshop. Some people do, some people don't. That helps with bugs. Um, rocks, you might find rocks. Stuck in the bark, might, again, might dull your chain real quick if you're cutting it up on a chainsaw or a bandsaw. Um, anything else that anyone's run into recently? Bullet slugs. They'll be in there. Barbed wire. Yeah. 
And uh, so all kinds of metal. If you anyone have a metal detector, anyone actually use their metal detector when they're cutting up wood? Yeah. Your your chainsaw finds it. That's uh, mine does too, apparently. <laughs> and that's why I carry a file with me. Um, but yeah, there's all sorts of things, uh, especially with storms like this. Usually the limbs that have fallen down or the trees that have come down are not healthy in the first place. So you might find obvious things like this, or there might be some less obvious things. You might see cracks form form very quickly where you don't expect them to be. Uh, don't expect them to be. Uh, but just be careful. Um, observe the wood uh, that you're working with, and when, especially when you put it on the lathe, uh, make sure to keep an eye on it as it's going around. And uh, and if you see anything odd, just step back and and check it out before you go for it further. But yeah. Thank you, Phil. Good information. I know that uh, I had several pieces, big pieces out of, by my driveway and they were gone pretty fast because I think mostly for firewood, I doubt if it was a turner, but as a turner, you do need to kind of keep that in mind, know where the tree, like if you know that it fell hard, uh, you might want to avoid it. If And a lot of stress, a lot of stress on the, on the, on the um, tree. Okay, so we got through those pretty good, and I think that'll lead us to our demonstration. So, Kevin, are we prepared and ready? All right. With no further delay, I will introduce uh, professional wood turner Neil Brand, going to demonstrate uh, spoon turning on the lathe as. Uh, one of the many things that that he uh, um, does. He is from Denton, Texas, and he is live streaming, as I understand it, from his shop in Denton, Texas. So let's all welcome Neil. And thank you, Neil. Thank you. Thank you for the invitation. For the invitation, and thank you for the introduction. Um, I noticed you said I was a professional wood turner. I don't think of myself as a professional. I think of myself as uh, a hobbyist. Um, I, I do sell some things. Uh, I go to the uh, uh, Denton community um, market every Saturday and sell. I don't sell a huge amount. I certainly don't make a living on this. It's a hobby and my sales basically pay for my habit. That's, what I, that's the way I like to say it. Um, it does a little more than that. But um, anyway, what I want to do today is talk about making spoons. Um, one thing that always bothered me about the spoons that I've seen made before by wood turners is, let me get a spoon out so I can point and show you, is that um, this part of the spoon, this scoop, um, is usually round. And it's usually round because it's mounted on the lathe and it rotates this way. And you hollow it like you hollow a bowl. And of course, if you're hollowing a bowl, it's going to be round. So I thought, well, how can I, how could I redo this or how could I do it in a different way so that I can make this whatever shape I want? And I thought the only way to do that is to hollow it from the end. And so that brought up two issues. One issue is how, how do you mount it so that you can hollow it from the end? The second issue is if, if you're hollowing it from the end and if this is the center of the lathe, the lathe axis, how far should the blank B from the from the axis in order to make it work out right. So I'm going to talk a little bit about that. Um, first of all, the question of how far apart or how far from the center it should be. Um, I worked out using a little bit of geometry and let me just show you quickly what how that works. I mean, I'm not going to spend much time on it. Let me shift over to the uh, upper part here. So um, here's a blank that I use. And, and the, what I use for a blank is I use a one inch board, uh, a foot long and three inches wide. Actually, it's not quite three inches. It's two and seven eighths. And I'll explain why in a little bit. Anyway, if you think about it going around and you're cutting it from the end, um, you kind of need to know how far from the center. So the way I look at it is this. Let me get maybe here would be better. There we go. Uh, let me get a marker. I can mark what I mean here. So what I want to do is I want to find a, the center of a circle that goes through this point, this point, and the center point up here. Okay, so I want the circle to look something like that. Something like that. 
Okay, so I did the calculation for that. And I found that uh, for a circle like that, um, you need to have a distance of um, what, seven eighths of an inch approximately. It, it, it depends on exactly the width of this because a one inch board isn't really one inch. In fact, it turns out, I did the calculation behind me, and if, if you really want to see it, I can show you the calculation. I, that, by the way, I don't know if, you, if, I, if anybody mentioned this, but I'm a retired math professor, so, so I enjoy doing math or figuring out the math. Anyway, so what it says is that if you're using a one-inch board, um, and I mount two boards at the same time, so they're mounted like this. Um, the distance between the boards should be one and one eighth inch. So that's pretty close. And that means I'd have to hollow in a pretty small area. And I, I'd rather hollow in a wider area if I could. And if I notice, I notice that if I do three quarters of an inch, which most winch boards are actually, if you buy one, um, then you can, then it's two and a quarter inches distance from here to here. Well, a lot of times they're seven eighths of an inch, so I thought I'll go somewhere between, and I thought about an inch and three quarters would be about right. So, so that's what I settled on. I, I needed to find a way that I can mount these two boards an inch and three quarters apart so that they can rotate on the, on the lathe. Well, I, I wasn't quite sure how to do it. I thought about just making a block of wood and maybe uh, putting threads on it and, um, and then a fasten and then just screw it into the uh, uh, headstock. But I thought that may not be the uh, best way to do it because wooden threads don't hold very, don't hold as well as metal threads. And furthermore, I'm out uh, a foot away from the headstock. And when I'm turning, there's going to be air here. So I'm going to turn wood, then air, then wood, then air. So it's going to be chunk, 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 chunk. And I thought that might be enough of a problem to, you know, mess things up. So anyway, I was looking through a woodcraft catalog, and I found this. Um, I don't know if you've seen these before. This is a, um, um, uh, a buffing extender. So it screws into the headstock, and um, in the end here, it has threads where you can put one of those little muffins on that you can buff with. And I thought, oh, this would be perfect because it's an instant three quarters uh, in diameter. So I thought, okay, I'll screw this into the headstock, and then um, and then I'll just put a wooden thing over the top of it. Okay, so let me show you what the wooden thing looks like. Let's go overhead here. Um, so I think you have a copy, or you have one of these there, I believe. So if you do, you might want to pass it around. So here's what it looks like. Just a block of wood. And in one end, I have a hole with uh, uh, where I can stick a bolt. You get the bolt. So bolt goes in here. And the other end, it's one and three quarter inches diameter. So this just fits in here nicely. And then I can screw this bolt in. And I have a solid surface to, um, to use to support the bolts. Okay. Oh, by the way, if you have any questions, uh, feel free to ask. Um, I'm not sure what the best process is. I'm looking at the meeting chat, so you could put a chat up, or if you could just, if you want to just say something, unmute yourself and say something, that's fine too. So anyway, I just tighten this up. And let me say a little bit about the size of this. A few more threads here. There we go. This board, it's um, one and three quarters inches. So, and I should have shown that before I screwed it in. But if you look at it here, you notice that the um, uh, the hole is right here tangent, or the tangent to it is this plane. And the same thing over here. And if it's not quite that, it doesn't really matter if it's if it's a little bit, if, the, if this board is a little bit wider than that. But I cut this to be one and three quarter inches this direction, uh, three inches this way. And this distance doesn't make too much difference. This is about six inches, but I think the one I sent is a little bit shorter. Um, I had a little bit of trouble um, when I was making those. I was going to send a second one of these along for you guys to see. But um, 
I had trouble with my tailstock too, and I wanted to order a part. And uh, so, by the way, if you're waiting for parts from um, from uh, Powermatic, or if, um, <laughs> they're getting them in on the 21st because I called and asked. So, so you may be okay if you wait a couple more weeks. You may get them in. Anyway, so what I did, I had to I had to fix my lathe, and um, the threads were bad in the quill. So I took it to a machinist, and he just uh, used a tap and tapped them, and now it works great. Okay, so anyway. Was there a question? I'm sorry, Neil. Mike Thomas yes. here. Say, I've got the package that you sent me, and I'm passing yeah. around the block now, and I've got the red. I don't know. Can you see? Can he see us? Can you see uh, us? No, I really can't. Yeah, I can now. Okay. Well, I've got the, uh, the box of uh, all the parts and everything. And so let me know when you want me to send out, send around the, send these okay. various items Let's in see. the package. Yeah, there's, I think there's two spoons in there. Probably you should send those around. Yeah, where are those spoons? Go? Oh, spoons have already been around. Okay, great. The lock is going around now with a hole in it. Okay, great, yeah. great. Yes, I'll let you know when I when I uh, when I'd like you to pass them around. I'll I'll probably hold them up and ask you to pass it then. Okay, thanks, Neil. Okay, you're welcome. So let's see. Um, <laughs> I lost train, my train of thought. Um, okay, so anyway, um, so this is this is what I use to uh, to uh, hollow the spoons with, and that's the first step. So what I'm going to do now is uh, attach this to the lathe. And it gives me a good solid um, base for that. And then I have these U-bolts. Um, now the U-bolts are uh, three inches across and they're five inches long. And if, if, you, if you buy U-bolts for it, make sure you get them that are flat on top and not the rounded ones, okay? Um, on, on my block, I put little um, valleys here and that's because these, uh, U bolts just barely go on here, and so I want it want them to sit there nicely. On the one that I sent, I don't think that would be a problem if you want three inch U bolts. And notice I'm putting these on uh, one with the uh, uh, nuts up and one down. Okay, and I do that because it helps to balance it just a little bit. I used to do it with them the same same way, and I gave a demonstration once, and somebody said, "Well, would it be better to turn one around so that you'd balance it better?" And I thought. Yeah, why not? So I tried it and it actually does work a little better. It works either way, but I like it this way a little better. Okay, so here's what I do. I take my two blanks and I draw a line. I think you can see it. Can you see that okay? That's at four and a half inches from the end. Okay, and that's where this edge should be. So I'm gonna put one in on the bottom and I'll just put it about where it's supposed to be and hold it there. Put one on, now turn it over and put another one in. And now I'm gonna just tighten them by hand a little bit. I'll probably have to move them a little bit just to get them centered like I want it, but I'll tighten it so they don't move on their own. So just hand tighten these. Now let me check. Okay, so this one, the line's right. Uh, it's about centered there. For the top one, let's see. Let's move it to the bottom. Uh, the lines, the lines, pretty good, and it's about the right. It's about right. So I'm trying to make this edge parallel with the edge of the block. Now the block that I'm using. <laughs> it's the first one I made, and um, I, I had a couple of two by fours glued together, and I thought, well, that would work as a test to see to see if this idea works. So that's what I did. I used it for a test, and I still haven't stopped using it. So I so I'm still using that one, and uh, it's not perfect, but it's good enough. Okay, so I'm going to put a wrench on this and get it good and tight. Notice that there's uh, sandpaper on each surface, and that's because it just helps to keep it in place, so it's less likely to slip around. I'm not sure it's really necessary, but I put it on anyway. 
Okay, so I tried to get it edges parallel and on the line uh, down here. So I'm going to get it good and tight. Okay, now I remember I said that these boards, uh, that my blanks, I don't make them three inches across. I make them two and seven eighths inches. The reason is because these U bolts are three inches across, and at the top here you don't have a square corner; it's curved. So if you um, if you make these three inches you only are getting support at one, at the ends or, or maybe even one end. In fact, last week I was making some of these and um, I made them three inches. I knew better than that, but I just didn't think about how I was doing it. And um, the first one I did, it, it messed up because this corner was touching, but it wasn't touching anywhere along this edge. And so uh, it just wasn't a good, good fit. And as I was turning it, it loosened up a little bit, it gave a little bit, and then it got all messed up. So I had to just throw those blanks out. In fact, I could still find, I haven't thrown them out yet because I'm gonna use them for other things. But anyway, I've got these tight, it's ready to go. So here's what I wanna do. I want to use, uh, let's see, let's go to the, I think I'll go to the end. And I'm gonna, so give me a second here to change which, one I'm, which, there we go. So uh, you can see here from the top and you can see from the end camera here. So here's the, here's what I, here's the way I did that my first one. I, I started just like this. And um, I took my hollowing tool, put it in here and I started turning. So you can see that I could just turn along here you know, and get the shape I'm, I'm after. But you may see the problem. I didn't see the problem right away, but I found out what the problem was before long. I was doing this and I was doing going great. I made several spoons and then I was making one and I was just, you know, going at it good. I got over here, this came up like that and wham, it, it grabbed the tool and threw it out of my hand. Uh, the boards were all messed up. So um, what I do now is I use a safety shield. So um, let me show you what the safety shield is. So here's a safety shield. And basically it's just, it's just a piece of plastic. I 3D printed this, but this diameter of this hole is one and three quarter inches. And then I have four holes here to put screws in. So what I'm gonna do is just screw that in the end. So I'll try to make this centered as best I can. And it doesn't matter if it's off a little bit. So I'll just, uh, it'll be about right there. Here's where I want my holes. Oh, so you want to pass that safety shield around? I think there should be one there. You might even have two. So go ahead and pass that around. Okay, so you can see where I have them marked. Here's one. Here's one. Neil, is there a There's difference one. between the red and the black safety shield? Uh, th yes. The difference is one is red and one is black. But other than that, there's no difference. They're both Thank 3D you. printed, so they should be really uh, pretty close to identical. And the nice thing about these 3D printed ones, you know, I marked it. If I turn it differently, it's still going to be lined up perfectly. So, um, so they're kind of nice. But you could make these out of wood, too. If you just get a little piece of uh, plywood, just thin plywood, drill the holes like this and it would work fine you know you don't have to 3d print it it's just that you know when you get when you get a tool you just sort of feel like you should use it well i have a 3d printer so i try to use it whenever whatever i can okay so let's see i punched places where i want to drill the holes so let's go ahead and drill some holes so i'm going to put screws in here to hold the can you still hear me when the drill's running? Yes, everything, we can hear you. Yep. Okay, all right, good, good. So you can hear me while it's, while it's going. Okay, so now I'm just going to screw it in place.
and I don't care how this is turned. I, I don't, I didn't know how it was originally, so it doesn't really matter. And I'll just put the screw in. So this takes a little bit of extra time putting the safety shield in, but I think it's well worth it because uh, you only have to have, have that accident that I described earlier happen once, and you really don't want it to happen again. Okay, so it's in place. So now it's time to uh, hollow. So this is the first real step is hollowing. And I'm gonna put my uh, face shield on. So can you still hear me with the face shield on? Yes. Okay. Um, so it's okay. It's because um, what I wanna really know now is when I'm hollowing this, I wanna know if you can hear me when I'm talking because I will be hollowing and talking um, at the same time. Okay, so um, you can use whatever hollowing tool you want. Um, I want this one to be about on center. It's a carbide tip on the end. This is a, a Trent Bosch um, hollowing tool. It's just a straight hollowing tool, that's all you need. So, um, oh, I don't have my lathe turned on. Hang on a second. It's kind of hot here in Texas, and so I had my lathe off so that it wouldn't get any warmer in here than uh, necessary. There we go. Okay, so I'm gonna turn it up to about 1500 RPMs. And hollow. Okay, so um, I put my hand up here against the tool rest so I can remember where um, I was before. Let's see, can you see? Yeah, you can see the tool. Okay, good. So now I'm just gonna bring it over gently, and start hollowing. So I'm just gonna go back and forth. I try to cut so that I have uh, good fiber support. The shape I'm looking for is sort of egg shaped. I want it to be uh, not, a, not a perfect oval, but um, toward the uh, handle end, I want it to be wider and then more gradual at the other end. I still have a little ways to go, but let me just show you what it looks like. Okay, let's see. Um, if you look at the uh, picture in picture, you can kind of see the oval shape there. It's not perfect, but it's getting close to what I want. And then the other one should look the same, approximately. Okay, so let's go some more. Well, I want the hollow to start back maybe half an inch to an inch from the um, from where that block that's holding it ends. And I want to go within, say, half an inch or an inch of the of the end that's toward me. Now I can see about how deep I am because I can see the shadow of the edge of the blank. So I'm not worried about going through. It's getting pretty close. Let's have a look. Okay, let's see here. Let me go here. 
So you can kind of see it. Um, here, it's sort of egg-shaped, um, thicker down here than, uh, let's see, sort of egg-shaped. It's thicker on this end than it is at this end. So it's about the shape I want. I can feel, feel here to see how, how deep it is. And it's about as deep as I want it. Uh, I'm gonna stop there with this tool because uh, I have about the right shape I want. And I'm gonna now use a tool that gives me a little bit better um, cut. So this is a negative rake scraper. Um, let's see. You can see that it's flat on this side, and that's what's going to be down. And um, I've sharpened this to be a negative rake. I don't know if you can see that or not. It's kind of hard to see, but it is. Um, this is a Todd Rains tool, and his what's the name of his company? I forget. It's wood something wood wood something wood turning something. Anyway, um, wood it's wood a nice tool. tool. I like it. It. it, it did someone say something? No, it's the Woodworking Tool Store. Woodworking Tool Store, that's it, yes. I couldn't quite read it on here, but, I, but I, that is it. Okay, so what I'm going to do is lift my rest a little bit. Let's go back to, uh, in fact, let's make, uh, oh, what do I want? I want this camera. Yeah, here we go. Oh, on. Okay, so I'll do it the other way this time. This time, I'll make this the main camera and the one coming in like this, uh, the insert. So what I'm gonna do is just cut real lightly. Because all I'm trying to do is just clean it up a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Okay, not perfect, but it's it's good enough for for tonight. If if uh, if I were doing this uh, on my own, I'd probably spend a couple more minutes just kind of just kind of like here. There's uh, I kind of went in a little bit, so I should take a little more out here. But I'm not going to worry about that now. I just wanted to show you how you how you do that. So um, I'm not quite done. I'm not ready to take it off yet. But I am ready to take off the uh, safety shield. So let's take that off, and then I'll work on the outside here. Okay. Let's see here. So, oh, I forgot to mention on these U bolts. Um, I got them at, what's it called, Bolt, Bolt Emporium or something like that. Um, and I couldn't find any that were five inches long. And five inches would be as, as ideal. I could get four inches, I could get six inches. So I wound up just getting um, six inches and then cutting an inch off. So anyway, uh, if you find five inch ones, you'll be lucky. I wasn't lucky. Okay, so next, I'm going to... Uh, Work on the outside here and make it look like the scoop of a spoon. Let's see, let me move the, let's change the camera. A bit. There we go. In fact, why don't we do it this way? I'll put that as the main camera and I'll do it like that. Okay. So, the thing you have to watch for is these things flying around because, you know, you don't want to get your hands on those. So, I'm going to put my tool rest over here on the side a little bit. And um, I'm just going to 
be, be careful never to move my hand beyond here. So that's something you have to watch for. Okay. Um, I'm going to use roughing gouts to start with. Again, I'm going about 1500 RPMs. I'm going to turn this light on here because it makes it easier for me to see where the hole is, where I just, where I just hollowed. And I don't know if that helps you to see it or not. I guess you can. You can see it, I think. If you could adjust the camera up a little bit, that would be helpful. I'm sorry? If you could adjust your camera up a little bit. I'll oh, okay, yeah. Up or down. Yeah, perfect. Okay. Let me t I'm going to turn this off before I uh, fasten it down because uh, I don't want to get my shirt caught in the... Went too far. That's good. Okay. All right, here we go. I'm going to switch over to a spindle gouge because I can get a little cleaner cut. And again, I'm doing air turning. And uh, air turning is not hard to do, but it's something that it's a little bit scary if you haven't done it before. Our club uses uh, two by fours to turn cars. And there we turn two cars at once from the, from the blank, the two by four blank. And, uh, and we do air turning there. So I'm kind of used to it. I don't worry about air turning anymore. What I'm trying to do is get close to the uh, edge of the hollowed part, but not too close. So let's have a look and see how close it is. I'm going to go just a little bit more. I would like, let's see, I'd like this edge to be about three eighths of an inch, and it's a little more than that right now. So I'm going to go just a little bit further. That's about where I want it. Okay, so that's good. So I have everything from about here on, this region here, about where I want it. Now I have to go from here to here, and that's, that's getting closer to these bolts, so you have to be careful. So originally I was doing it in ways that um, I was a little afraid of, because I'd be going up and I'd afraid my tool would slip and uh, I'd wind up hitting one of these bolts or something. Now I do, do it a little differently, and this works nicely for two reasons. One is it avoids that, and the other one is it helps in later steps, as, as I'll explain as we go. Okay, so here's what I do. I look at where the spoon stops. Now that's at this point right here, okay? And I'm gonna use the parting tool to cut a little trench around at, right, at that, right at that spot. So I'm just gonna cut in a little bit, a little bit more. And I want it a little bit wider than the parting tool, so I'll, um, yeah, you can see it there, I think. And so see, this will keep me from getting the tool um, too close to the uh, metal. Okay, let's see where we are now. Okay, I'm almost far enough. Here's what I look at. I look at where this stops, and if there's a gap there, I want to keep going. I want this to go all the way across, and on the other side, it should be about the same, yeah.
Okay, so let's see where we are now. Okay, so it's gone all the way across, and it's not very deep. It's only, at this point, it's only about maybe just over a sixteenth of an inch, and that's about where I want it. I don't want to go too deep, because if I go too deep, when I make the handle over here, the handle has to be too small. So just, just a little bit in there, like a sixteenth of an inch is fine. And now I have to do this part. So um, I'll just use a spindle gouge. You could use the roughing gouge, but it doesn't matter much. Whatever you feel comfortable with. Now I only go to the depth of the trench. So when I get to the trench, I want it to be that depth and no more. Okay, so that's that's good enough for tonight. I, I would maybe maybe spend another minute or two on it. Otherwise, if if I weren't doing a demo, but basically that's what I'm looking for. If you look at it, it's about three eighths of an inch here, and over here it gets bigger, and that's fine. That's that's just what I want. Okay, so I have a flat here, so maybe I better take just a little bit more out because that's going to be the bottom of the spoon, the flat there. So I will take just a little bit more out. It doesn't have to be much because it's just a small flat. And that should do it. If it's a really small flat, I don't care because I'm going to have to sand it. This, they're right there. There's just a really, I doubt if you can, you can probably kind of see it there. There's just a little small flat. But once I sand that, that'll be gone. And I don't sand this part until I'm cleared, till cleared and that's the last step. So, so that is, uh, that's the first step to get at this point. Okay, so now I take it off of the lathe. So I just loosen these bolts. Saw for a little bit. Okay, so I got those loops. Listen, these. I usually wear a smock when I do this, but uh, we've been having some hot weather here. I don't know if you heard. But today was a good day. The high was only 98, so it was a cool day. Okay, so here's what, here's what we have. We've got two of these that are essentially identical, and you can see they're still pretty rough. I, I, I should have spent a little more time, but that's okay. I, I'll still be able to sand them out later. Okay, so that's the first step. Now what I do, let's see, let me take this off. That's on there kind of tight. There we go. Okay. So the next step is to cut these. Um, of course, a spoon has a handle, so I'll cut a line here, down through a line here, a line here, same with both of them. And what I'll wind up with is this. Oops, the wrong way. Okay, so um, notice what I do is I cut straight along here, straight along there, and um, and then I cut along here, and then come straight down like that. Okay, is that seeable? I don't know. So I wind up with these. Okay, so I'm just going to use one of these because um, I don't want to have to go 
take it to the saw and cut this up. So now I got one of these. But I also have two pieces of wood like this. That's where I cut it out. So what do I do with these pieces? Well, I make, <laughs> I use these. <laughs> You know, I buy these boards, and um, and I, I hate to throw wood away, and um, so I try to use these things so that they pay for the for the board itself that I've used. So here's so I want to show you some things I make with it. Let's go back to this. So here's one thing. So do you know what this is? Can anybody guess what it is? So I make it out of this. Well. I made it originally for my daughter's dog because she has a dog and to fetch or to chew on because he loves to chew on wood, especially furniture. And um, and so I actually took him to the market and was sell. I sell them for that. I sell them for like four dollars. And um, somebody came up once and said, oh, is that a tortilla roller? And I said, yes, it is. And uh, so now I sell a lot more of them <laughs> because it's a tortilla roller or a cookie roller or a Play-Doh roller. And so I do sell a number of these and they're four dollars. It just pays for the wood, basically. And I also make other things. Um, so let's see. Uh, well, yeah, I'll hold it like this. So can you see what that is? That's a pig. It's a, and it's a magnet. There's a magnet on the back. And so it's a refrigerator magnet. It's like a pig. And I make mice. And I sell those for $15 each. And I don't sell a huge number, but I sell enough to pay for boards. Um, I also make train whistles. Now, here's the train whistle that I make. And if you look at it, if you look at the end, you can see I've used four pieces of wood. So that's four of these pieces of wood. I drill each of them out different lengths. One's, uh, one's uh, four inches, one's three and a half, one's three, one's two and a half inches. And, uh, and then uh, I glue them together and I put a cap on it and I have a train whistle. And I put a straw in here. And the reason I put a straw on these is because um, when I have them sitting out for sale, some kid will walk up and just blow on it, you know, and then, okay, now I've got to go sterilize it. And so that's a pain in the neck. So I put these straws in, if they blow it, then I just change the straw. So here's what it sounds like. Sort of like a train. Anyway, that's something else I make. I sell those for $25. Um, so probably have 150, maybe 200 of these sitting around. I've, I've already used a lot of them. Okay. Um, so how do we do the next step? Now, you may not be able to see it there, but if you look behind me, here's my tailstock. I haven't been using my tailstock yet because I haven't needed it and it would get in the way. So now I need to put it on. And while I'm doing that, um, I want you to show the next piece. That's this plastic piece. So can you pass that around? I think there's two of them. There's two, sl two slots across here. So. We've got them passing around now, Neil. You got to pass it around now? Okay. So I'm going to put that in the tailstock. And let's go two on. There we go. And, uh, and then I'm going to put a... Uh, a, 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 what are they called? A step center. This is one half inch in the ta in the headstock. And now what I'm going to do is mount this, and um, I'm going to mount the handle on the on the uh, headstock. And I want it pretty close to the center. It can be a little bit below the center, meaning if the scoop is up like this, then down would be. <laughs> down here on the underneath. So maybe just a tad below the center or right on the center. So it's about there. So let's see, I want this here. Now here, I mount this by sticking this in the um, outside slot. And I make it so that the um, bottom, bottom part is on the outside. That's where I'll be, that's where I'll be cutting. Now, the way I thought about doing this is, is the way people make uh, spatulas. And let me just talk a little bit about how people make, or how, like, um, Mike Hoslick and others make spatulas. Um, 
So to make a spatula, this is how I do it. And I think a lot of people do it this way. Not my idea. Is I first take a, the same board, same board as I'd use for a wooden spoon, <coughs> excuse me, blank. And um, I cut a wedge in it. So can you see there's a wedge there? I used to do it on a, on a, a bandsaw, but now I use a table saw. And that's why you can see this thing here because it's you know because there's the there's the saw blade anyway I, I need to get a wedge this wedge is um uh i don't know the angle but if you measure up here 11 centimeters um it's two centimeters wide so if you look at if you look at the final version here that's what you have go 11 centimeters it's two centimeters wide okay um and then you mount it using one of these oh i don't know where i put it Oh, right here. Okay, so this looks almost like this red one, but this, all it has is one slot right in the center, okay? So you mount it like this. And again, you cut these, you cut these pieces off first, these uh, side pieces, so that you're, in fact, I should, once you cut it off, it looks like this. You mount it like that, just like, kind of like I mounted this spoon, and then you spin it and shape it. You shape all the thing at once. Um, so anyway, when I was thinking about making these spoons, I thought, yeah, why couldn't I just do that with spoons? But I thought about it a little bit and thought, it's not going to quite work if I just put it in the center. So I have to move it out. So if you're going to make one of these, you can make them out of wood. Where you would put the slots would be the one that I put it in, this outside one here. This, the one that's furthest from the center, that should be about, uh, I think it's three quarters inch. Let me check. It's been a while since I made it. It should be, I moved it the wrong way. Da, 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 da. Yeah, it should be about uh, centered at about a half an inch from the center of the of the piece. So find the center, go out three quarters, and then just put a slot in there. Now notice my slot stop here. If you did this out of wood, you'd probably just take your saw and run it clear through and that'd be fine. It, it doesn't matter that it doesn't go all the way to the end. Okay, so there's where I start. Now the reason I'm doing this is because this is the width I want right here, but it's, and it's the same width here, but it looks a lot wider. So what I'm gonna do is cut along here and make it a little bit closer. I'm going to get it within oh, maybe a sixteenth of an inch or so. Now the first thing I have to do is make sure it's centered. So the way I do it is I put my finger here and I feel where it's just touching. And it should just be touching here and it's not. It's not touching at all. So I'll just move it over a little bit. When it just touches on both then I tighten it up. Let's check it again. Oh. Yeah, I'm off just a little bit, so I need to move it toward me just a tad. Let's see what that's like. That's good. Yeah, that's good. Okay, so all I'm gonna do now is work on this part right through here. So I'm gonna use a spindle gouge to do it. Oh, one more thing I'm gonna to do too is I'm gonna to take this, you can see, yeah, you can see there's kind of a sharp looking thing here. I'm gonna just take that down a little bit. Okay, so now I can just, I'm gonna go a little faster here. I can kind of see the uh, shadow 
of where the edge of the hollow part is. And uh, notice that these are about the same. This one may be a little bit smaller than that one. I may not have it perfectly centered, but it's close enough. So this is looking pretty good here. Uh, that's about what I want. I'm going to take some more off here, and I'm going to start working on this a little bit. So I'll take a little bit more on this end. And then I'll take some off of this end. Okay, so I want to show you what the cut looks like now. Um, there's a ridge right here. And that's that's what you expect. Um, uh, yeah, the ridge would be up here, and there's a ridge here. So I'm going to take some more off here. This I like. I think that's pretty good. So I'm only going to take some right in here. But be careful not to take too much off in the handle part because it's off center. So you're taking off material here, but not there. So you have to make sure that you've got enough material here to get the handle you want. I think I can take a little more off because it's almost the full inch there. So I'm going to cut in here some more. That's pretty good, I think. Okay, let me show you what I kind of, one of the things I'm looking for. If you look at this, this was the first cut when I had it mounted differently. Right here's the ridge between the two cuts, and here's the cut, the second cut. And I want it so that if you just sand a little bit here and take that ridge out, that you get a nice smooth curve across there. And it looks pretty good. So I'd say, I'd say that looks good. I've got a good, um, edge here. So that's all I'm going to do on that step. Okay, the next step is to remount this so that it's on the center. Now, if you look at this, um, okay, if you look at this piece, on that center slot, one of the edges is right on the center. The other one is just above the center. So what I want to do is put the one that's on center, you know, one that the, the line there that's on the center of the, oops, let's put that back on. There it goes. So I want to make sure that the line that is on the center of the piece is on the bottom of the spoon. And the reason is because that way, if you look at the center line of the lathe, it starts here and it goes still below this surface. It's not up here somewhere. It's still inside of the spoon. And that way, when I'm making this the handle round, I can make it completely round by the time I get here. Okay, so again, I have to make sure that I'm centered. So I use my finger. See, I'm off a little bit there. It needs to come toward me a little bit. Oh, I went too far, I think. A little bit this way. There we go. Okay, so now all I have to do is make the handle and make this transition. So I'm going to work on the transition first, and then I'll do the handle. And I'm going to use the roughing gouge, at least for part of it. Okay, so I'm going to, I can kind of see the shadow and I want to kind of follow that shadow and then cut in. Now go from this side a little faster. Thank <laughs> you. 
So let's have a look here, see how it looks. Okay, so I'm getting a pretty good ridge there. So it means I'm going to have to take, let's see if I can get it. Yeah, you see that ridge there? I've got it to um, cut some more out here to try to get a better transition from this cut to that cut. Okay, it's looking better. Let me use the spindle gouge. I can get a little tighter turn there, I think. Okay, that should be pretty close now. Yeah, so if you look at that, I've got this ridge here, but if you ignore the ridge, if you just sand that ridge off, it's going to be a pretty good curve from there to there. It'll take some sanding, but I'll show you how I sand a little bit. It doesn't take long to sand it off. And so now I finish the handle. Okay, so I'll use the roughing gouge. What I like to do is paper it a little bit. I like to make the thinnest part somewhere up in here, not, not clear at the end, but somewhere around there. I can kind of feel where it needs to be cut if I can't see it well. Yeah, right there, I need to cut some more. That's a little bit more here. A little bit here. That's pretty good. Let's look at it, make sure it looks all right. Yeah, that's, that's good. I could have cleaned up a little bit more here, but that'll sand out really nicely. Okay, so I'm going to put a half bead here at the end. Stop before I get it, before I uh, cut it off. And now, I like to put a little decoration in. Do, do whatever decoration you want, but what I do is I do three um, lines, or rather actually circles on one end and then three on the other end as well. So I'm gonna do that tonight. And I use this tool. Let me just show you what this tool is. It's, uh, let's see here. Can you see it there? Maybe I'll hold it real close here. So it's basically I cut flat along that edge and then I just V it. So it's just a, um, I don't know, just a sharp little tool. <laughs> I'm not sure what it's called. It's kind of like a point tool, but point tools that have a pyramid on the end. This is not quite like that. But anyway, I'm going to put three lines. I want to equal. I want them equally spaced. And it took me a longer time than I'd like to admit to learn that the way to do that is to put the outside ones. Oops. I think it skipped on me. Let me check here. Yes, it did. I'll just have to make that a little bit wider. Do the outside ones first, and then then you can put the middle one in the middle, pretty close. I'll do the same thing here.
Okay, now uh, people burn these a lot of different ways. I use a wedge. Here's one. So let me, let me say a little bit about these wedges. Every time I make a uh, spatula, um, I cut a wedge out. Okay? And so these wedges are great just for burning. And that's what I'm going to use. I know some people use wires. Um, I don't use wires. And the reason is because a friend of mine was using a wire to burn something like this. And the wire broke, came back, and he had to have stitches. So um, so I just don't do that. I, I, use, I use these boards for this. And this works very well. Let's go a little faster. Let me burn a little more here. Okay. Okay, so the spoon's essentially done except for, span for sanding. So I'm not going to sand much tonight, but I do want to show you how I sand it. Um, so first of all, what I do is I sand the handle here. Before I start sanding, I'm going to cut a little bit more off of here so that I can sand it down a little bit closer, closer to the end. Okay, now I can sand it down a little ways. So I usually start with 120. I go up a little bit on the off of the uh, handle into the transition area, but just a little bit. I'll get that better later, but I like to go up a little bit. Okay, that's probably good enough for the 120. And I just go through the, put it through its pace as I go up to 400. Okay, so let's pretend that's sanded. Now, the next thing is how do you sand this inside? So I want to talk a little bit about that. Um, the first few of these I made, I just sanded by hand. You know, I just got in there and sanded, and, and, and that was a pain in the neck. That, that I don't do anymore. Um, oh, the other thing I do is I, I, I usually make this thin enough I can break it off, but I forgot to do that. That's all right, though. Okay, so um, um, here's how I do it. Let me get this out. Uh, so... Um, you should you should have gotten I think I sent two of these these little uh, ball sanders or ball yeah they're ball sanders so I'm using that we've got them going around now okay great it's a little bit different the one I'm using is a little bit different I, it was I had a different design originally and the one I sent you I like better but I still I still use my old one for some reason I, I need to just use one like that one and if you look at this closely you can see uh it's hard to kind of show that oh maybe if i do it like this anyway it's kind of rough it's not it's not real smooth so i want to get this smooth now you need to have sandpaper that fits so here's what i use now let's go overhead here on Give me a second here. There we go. So um, I have a, a, a four inch piece of round sandpaper. And what I do is I lay a quarter on it, draw a circle around the quarter. And then I cut these slots straight out, four equally spaced around or approximately. I don't measure anything. I just approximate it. And then you can stick it on the end here. Maybe it would be better to use three. Would that work? Yeah, there we go. You stick it on the end, put these down, 
one at a time. Make sure you go the right direction for the, the direction the lathe's going. You see the lathe goes this way, so it'll just kind of lay down like that. Okay? Four inch works well. Three and a half inch you can use. I've used three and a half inch uh, disc for this as well. Three inches are pretty small, um, but you can find those a number of places. I got these, I think, on Amazon, actually. They weren't very expensive. Okay, so... Oh, I usually do another step first, but I'll do that second this time. Okay, so now all I do is I just... Maybe overhead would be better. Let's try overhead. Uh, da, 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 da. Two. Okay, that looks a lot better. I think it's pretty much done. I'm getting kind of a sharp edge there, so I'm just going to kind of do this to get a little bit of a less sharp. And that looks pretty good. So what I would normally do is I would go through to 400 grit. So just keep sanding it down to 400 grit using this. Um, and it doesn't take very long. Okay, so um, the step I usually do before this, and I forgot to do, is um, I take it to a... I use a belt sander, but for tonight, I'm going to use the lathe. And I'll show you how I do that. Let's go back here to this. Uh, okay, let me take this out. So... So I'm going to use this. This is... Uh, uh, basically, I just made this block of wood, drilled it out for a bolt. You can see there's a bolt in there. And I made it fit these threads on this sanding disc that I got on Amazon, I believe, if I remember right. And I attach it to the lathe. Let's see, let's go to... And on just a second here while I change this. There we go. Okay, so I've got that fastened. And now I'm going to take the uh, rest, tool rest out, and replace it with this. And this is just a, you know, a piece of metal that I attach to a flat piece of wood. So now what I want to do is I want to get this, this uh, end so it's right. So all I have to do is just, oops, try not to drop it though. <laughs> Okay, so that's, uh, that's about where I want it there. And now I'm going to get this, uh, let's see if you can see that. There's, uh, there's just a lot of little extra material there, so I'm going to get that off like this. Oh, I got a burn spot there. That's not good. Okay, so here I've got it a little bit too thin. If, I, if that happens, you can just put this up against and you'll get an edge back. So now I want to get some more of, that, of this edge off. I'm going awfully fast here. I'll slow it down. Okay, so I got the edge back. It looks good. Right here, there's a little bit... You might be able to see it. That's not quite 
curved right. So I can just kind of go like this. It's pretty good there. So I'm just kind of touching up where I can. So it's looking pretty good for, for the top of the spoon there. Okay, so the next thing I do is sand the bottom. Oh, one more thing I want to do here. Normally, yeah, I do this on the on the bandsaw, but normally uh, I don't have all this here. I just have a little piece sticking out, but I'm going to have to sand it off this time because um, I, I forgot to uh, make it really thin. So I can sand it off. I'm trying to go way too fast. So it'll just take me a minute here to get this. Yeah, I burn it a little bit, unfortunately. That's okay. I'll get that off. Okay, so I've got that pretty close to where I want it. Um, I'll sand it more in a minute when I show you the next step. So the only thing we have left is to do the back. And the end there that I was just working on. Okay, to do that, I use uh, this piece. Okay, so it goes on center. And this, all this is, is just a uh, uh, dowel that I turned, and I don't remember the diameter, but with the Velcro on, it's, yeah, it's just about, just under one and seven eighths. So it's a little bit bigger diameter than the um, aluminum piece I was using earlier. So it's about one and seven eighths. This comes off. On. And now what I use is uh, sandpaper that's basically a half of a regular sheet. So I put it around. Let's see, I have to make sure that I get it the right way. Yeah, okay, so when this is going around, this will be flapping a little bit, but that's okay. All right, so here's what I do. By the way, I'm using 80 grit here because there's I have a lot of material here to take off. So here's, here's what I do. First, let me get the end a little bit. And then I just go back and forth with it. So you can see, well, maybe you can see that this part up in here is looking pretty good. Just needs a little bit more maybe. So now we'll work on the back part and this diameter is pretty good for this usually. So I'll take this spoon and just put it up here like this and roll it around. And then back and forth. Watch for, get, make sure you get the ridges out. So I've got the ridges out. What I don't have is um, the curve here. I, the, let's see, the surface here I would like. It's a little bit low right here and high right there. So I'm going to try to get that out a little bit. I don't worry if it's off just a little bit, but I don't like it to be too far off. Yeah, that's a lot better. So now that's not too bad. Um, if you look closely, it looks like maybe I need to take a little bit more out right in here. So I'll just... Okay, and that's that's pretty good. I might work on it a little bit more if, if I were doing it and this weren't a demo, but it's not a bad spoon. Right now it's not bad. 
Now, this end, you can either just do it by hand, which I always used to do, but then I realized I've got this thing spinning around and this is flapping. So this is a good time just to, uh, to use the flap on it. So you see what I'm doing? I'm just kind of rolling it and uh, moving it back and forth. And so that gives me a, the start. Then what I do is I take this off, I move to 120 and go all the way to 400. And when I'm done, I'd have a spoon. As for the finish, I don't use finish. And the reason I don't use any finish is because um, if they're going to be using it for food, I think people would prefer not to have finish. If they want to put oil on it, I tell them they can. Uh, but the spoon looks good like it is, I think. Um, and that's, that's how you make, that's how I make spoons. So are there any questions? Thank you, Neil. Um, You're welcome. Oh, they're asking what kind of wood you were using for the spoons. Oh, good. Good point. I meant to say, and I probably forgot at the beginning, I use hard maple. I go to, uh, uh, a, a local hardwood store and uh, I buy hard maple. I can usually get it for about $6. One of these is about, uh, what, a fourth of a board foot. So it costs me about $1.50 for each of these. A little more because there's usually some waste. But um, uh, I use hard maple. Um, you could use soft maple, but I think hard maple is better. I think it, it's more, it'll, it'll last longer. It'll be just better better product, I think. Um, I've heard that sycamore would be a good, a good one to use. Um, a light wood like that's good because it's less likely to have a taste. Um, I wouldn't use like walnut or cherry or something like that. A lot, no, actually, I, let me back up. I have used cherry before and it wasn't bad, but, I, but I'm kind of reluctant to because it might give a flavor. So other questions? Any other questions? Oh, do you have a handout on this? Um, you know, I I can send you one. I, I forgot to send it. I meant to send one um, a couple days ago, and I, I just forgot to do it. So I can send it to Mike if you like. Yeah, that'd be great. Appreciate okay. it. Oh, we got yeah. a question? Okay. So it, it, we'll get the handout, and Kevin will post it on the uh, in the library on the website. Um. There was another question. Okay. Do you by chance have 3D printer files that you could share for the... the yeah, I do. I do. Um, yeah, I can, I can send the 3D. Actually, yeah, you can... I have the 3D uh, printer files on Thingiverse. If you... Let's see. If you search for... Um, um, <laughs> Something like uh, turning spoon or turn spooned um, something. I'm sorry. I should have. I should have looked. I'll put that on. I'll put that on the uh, sheet that I send. Just shoot it over. But you can you can just download it. Okay. For Thingiverse. Actually, if you look for me, if you look for Neil Brand, probably um, I just have a few things on. If you look at that, you'll see them there. It should list them. Okay. But I'll send a link to that. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention, I forgot to mention this earlier. Um, on the um, uh, buffing extender, uh, this was, I, I've had two all, near catastrophes before this demo. The first one was a few weeks ago. I was looking at, uh, I was thinking, well, I should look up where, what, which uh, wood turning places have those extenders. So I went to the places that I'd seen them before. And a few of them would have one. Some of them were out of stock. And you know, I, I thought, okay, this is bad. If you guys can't get a hold of these, then this demo, demonstration is not going to do you much good if you want to make a spoon. So um, I called some places and they said, what happened was uh, the company that makes them is called Holdfast. And Wood Turner's Wonders bought the company out just recently. I'm not sure when, but just recently. And so they're not selling to any other um, wood turning distributors other than uh, Wood Turner's Wonders. So if you want to buy, if you want to buy one, you might still find one one of those stores. Like I think um, 
Um, craft supply still had a couple left instead of inch and three quarter, they're inch and a half, but you just have to modify a little bit for that. That'd be no big deal. And there might've, I know Woodcraft is out. I'm pretty sure that Grizzly's out, but there were a couple stores. If you search, you might be able to find them. Amazon seems to have them. They may be sold directly through Holdfast. I'm not sure, but if you can't find them anywhere else, or if Amazon doesn't have them, when you look, um, what you need to do is call Wood Turner's Wonders. Um, they do not list it on their website, but if you tell them that it's a Holdfast product and you want it, they can they can get it for you. Okay. That's Hopefully, they'll have it on the website soon, but they don't have it now. I don't think. That's Ken Rizzo. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, and uh, that was my first disaster. My second disaster was the tail stock. I was afraid I wasn't going to have a working tail stock, but I did get that fixed. <laughs> so I was able to do the demo. <laughs> it, it went great. I appreciate it. Everybody, oh. you guys, enjoy that. Yeah. Oh. Oh, thank you. The ball sanders, did you make make the part that you wrap a, wrap the piece around? Yes, I do. I make those. I made them for several ways. If you can see this one, what I did is I just cut these um, tr kind of sort of triangular pieces and then glued them on. But the trouble is they tend to want to come off. The ones I sent you are much better. Um, there's two pieces that are um, uh, 3D printed, and there's a bolt that comes out of it that I cut off, and that's the stem. And the way I fasten that, or the way I make that is I make all this Velcro in one piece, so it looks like a spider. I think I have six legs coming out. And then I fold them down, and I figured out how to do it so they would come pretty close. Um, it's a sign curve, basically. But um, anyway, so I did that, and then they tuck in between the two, and I tighten them together and and uh yeah. and i want to use velcro that was sticky on the back so it just stuck and and those work a lot better okay i also i also make uh similar to that i make these for hollow forms where you can hollow those out and this end is exactly the end the same as the end i sent you okay so anyway that's terrific. We got... So if you want one of these, I mean, if you let me know, I can, I can, I could send you the files for it. I don't think I have them on Thingiverse. I could, I could put them on Thingiverse. Maybe I'll do that. Then if somebody has a 3D printer, they could just print them out. Okay. And you provided the club a couple, so we've got some yeah. to access. So. Yeah. And I don't think I glued those together. I think you can take it apart and see what it looks like inside if you want. Oh, okay. Ed, did you have a question? Right. So is there another question? Um, the, yeah, let me give the microphone to Ed here. He's got a question for you. Okay. You know, you said you couldn't make the blanks three inches wide. Yeah. You had to make them two and seven eighths. Well, because your U-bolts are have the rounded corners. Yes. Did you ever think about just breaking the edge where the U-bolts are? so that you round that edge just a little bit so that you bolts will fit down all the way tight. So round on, on the blank itself, round it yeah. out. Yeah. No, I never thought of doing that. That'd probably work fine. Yeah. But you know, I, two and seven H is fine because <laughs> it's almost three inches. And so that's, that's, that's probably the simplest way to do it. The other thing too, is um, if you happen to get a board, that's exactly nine um, inches wide, then those two cuts will, enough to make it so they're just under three inches each so i just make them two and seven eighths but but you could do it differently yeah sure and and that's not the only way to mount two boards parallel like that i mean you could do it other ways um but this way i really like because it's solid and i feel pretty safe when i'm when i'm uh i'm hollowing okay i think that's it for our questions but you do have one uh task left and that's uh, give us the challenge for our next month's meeting. So. Okay. So here's the challenge. All right. <laughs> I want you to either make a spoon, and you don't have to do it the way I did, but a spoon of some sort, or a spatula. Now, if you're going to make one of these and you haven't 
done any serious hollowing before, I would suggest you do the spatula because um, hollowing this, it's, a, you know, it's, you're doing some air hollowing and that's, you know, it's just a little bit rough, but if you're used to hollowing, it's not hard, but if you haven't hollowed before, make, make, make a spatula. So our challenge for next month and try uh, not to drop it like I did. <laughs> Take what you learned tonight make a spoon or a spatula it doesn't have to be the exact same uh fashion that that neil did tonight but uh try to provide one of those two items neil i want to thank you uh your your uh demo was great your uh visuals were good we followed everything uh you sent us parts and pieces to show us exactly what you were using in the shop there i couldn't ask for better um Thank you for your time tonight, and uh, if we can ever, uh, if you're ever in Kansas City, stop by and see us. I would love to do that. I wish I could have been there tonight. <laughs> hey, well, it's 72 degrees here today, so you I really wish I could have been there tonight. <laughs> <laughs> would have been worth the drive, so. Yes, it would. <laughs> okay, well, we got to get on to the rest of our fin finishing up the meeting, but um Great demo and really appreciate it. Once again, guys, if you want to give him a little bit of applause. Thank you. Good job. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you.